want to welcome you all to the first part of this webinar series. Uh, this is actually the third webinar series we've done at Aptricity in the past couple of months. Uh, and this is one that we're really excited about because uh, as a product manager here at Aptricity, this is a question that I get very frequently, uh, which is, why do I need RFID if I already have barcode? Uh, you can get different variations of that question. Uh, what does RFID provide me from a tracking capability perspective? Why is it better than barcode? Why is barcode better than RFID? So there's a lot of different variations of this question, uh, but we decided to do a webinar series about this because it's a very pertinent question in today's tracking uh, ecosystem. And so we wanted to kind of go through some of the some of the important details about why RFID. And really, we wanted to focus on three main business uh, profiles. The first one being a, a company that does not have any solution put in place and is looking to put a tracking solution in. So we would recommend RFID in this situation because it's incredibly easy to set up and it can provide immediate value. Uh, the second business profile would be a company who has an existing barcode solution in place. And so that, that company, we would tell them that you can combine your barcode system with an RFID system to make it even more effective. So you don't necessarily have to replace it. But then that third business profile would be a company who's looking to replace their barcode system or to improve upon it. So you can either add to your barcode system or you can replace it entirely with RFID. So those are the three real key business profiles that we're going to be looking at and addressing throughout this series. So let's go ahead and dive into the slides here. So again, we want to thank you guys for joining us. This is part one of a four-part series. Uh, we will be doing each live session at 1030 Central. Um, on Thursdays. So it'll be this Thursday and then the following uh, for the next four weeks. So we also, like I mentioned before we start recording, uh, every webinar will be made available on our YouTube channel. You can also request a copy of it once we are done. So we'll be processing through those, uh, getting those uploaded so that you can view them again. Or like I mentioned, you can request a copy if you uh, want to have something for your for your personal use. So let's talk about the agenda this morning. Um, I'm going to give a quick introduction to myself and Aptricity, our company, and then we'll dive right into why RFID. We're going to talk a little bit about the technology and how it works. We'll talk a little bit about the differences between barcodes and RFID tags, uh, why you would use one over the other, and then we'll spend some time talking about how to implement an RFID solution, uh, which is important because I think it's a lot easier than people, than people think. Uh, a lot of times when I have conversations with with uh, people that are looking to implement a solution. Uh, they think that RFID is this technology that's really difficult and you have to have a high technical acumen to understand. And uh, we're here to tell you that it's not that hard. It's not any harder than a barcode solution. So there's a couple of additional components that go into it, but all in all, it's, it's incredibly simple to implement an RFID tracking solution. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the benefits of RFID tracking, and then we will have a Q&A session and then we will close. So a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, I do have everybody muted. Um, I've been on webinars before and the guy in the background with his jackhammer or the chainsaw uh, just likes to ruin it for everybody or, you know, the dog that's really excited to see someone crossing the street. Uh, so that's why we do have everybody muted. We will do the Q&A session through, uh, through the chat. So once we get to that section of the webinar, um, if you have questions, I will uh, answer them through chat. If you have questions throughout the webinar, I would ask you to hold off until the Q&A session. Um, we, I like to dedicate roughly 15 minutes to the section so that way we can handle as much as we can. If for some reason we just get overloaded with questions and uh, we don't get to your question, you can reach out to me personally. Uh, I have my email on one of the later slides and I'll go ahead and uh, reach out to you directly and we can chat. Uh, we wanna make sure that any questions you have about RFID or about a solution uh, get answered because that's what we're here to do. So that's about the agenda. Let's dive in. So who are we? Who is Aptricity? So Aptricity has been in business for 24 years. Uh, we provide software and IoT hardware solutions for asset management, inventory management, and field services management. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, we've been working with the United States Army since the mid-2000s, and we've had uh, commercial customers that have been built off of that same technology platform uh, really for the entirety of the time that we've been in business. So our IoT ecosystem, we call it our iConnect uh, line of products, and that includes RFID tags and RFID scanners. Uh, 
also contains Bluetooth and GPS tag options. So one thing that's unique about us as a business is that not only do we offer RFID, we also offer Bluetooth, uh, GPS tags, and satellite tags. So these are all offerings that we have. And the way that I like to put it is that you shouldn't let you shouldn't let a company dictate the type of tag that you use. You should let the value of the asset or the inventory item or whatever you're tracking that should dictate how much you spend on a tag. So we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we dive into this webinar a little bit deeper. But we do have our own IoT ecosystem. <clears throat> excuse me, IoT ecosystem that we've built and it integrates with our software solutions. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm Christian Garcia. I'm the product manager of our supply chain execution solutions. Uh, and I've been in this role for five years, about to be six. And I've overseen a lot of the integration of this technology that we've built into our software. So uh, I've been working with our development team for the last five years, building out the, the workflows that make the most sense to highlight the benefits of something like an RFID tracking solution or a GPS tracking solution. And the tracking technology does dictate the type of use cases that you build it out for. So uh, that's really been my role in the last five years is building out our software to maximize the benefits of the tracking technology. It's a it's a industry that continues to explode. Uh, it, and it's very easy to understand the, the value prop. You, you want to know where your stuff is. You want to know who has it. You want to know what condition it is. And maybe you want to know how much of it you have. So it's very basic principles that we um, we build out in our software. And I've uh, I've been blessed to work with a really intelligent development team who's built all those things out in our system. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Like I mentioned, this is the third webinar series that we've done. Um, I posted all three. So hopefully I don't fumble over my words too much, but uh, give me some grace if I you know, have to clear my throat like I just did. But uh, aside from that, that's really who we are as a business. Uh, we work with uh, both government and commercial companies alike. So uh, we have a wide variety of customers who who we work with. Um, and so me gathering that feedback from the product side uh, has allowed us to really create a webinar series that we think will be beneficial in explaining, you know, how the technology works and how to best utilize it. So that's who we are. And let's get into it. So part one, why RFID? So like I like I led off the webinar with, I think this is one of the most frequent questions that I get uh, about what, what benefits does RFID provide? Why should I use RFID? Why is it better than barcode? You know, all those different variations of the same question, which is really why RFID? And RFID has seen increased adoption, uh, specifically in asset and inventory management systems across multiple different industries. Uh, we at Autricity work with uh, a wide variety of companies that use RFID, uh, ranging from you know, city state governments to construction companies, to uh, telecom, uh, you name it. We work with a, a wide variety of industries, uh, government included, who all utilize RFID technology uh, to some extent. And like I also mentioned to start off the webinar, if you're looking to replace or enhance an existing solution, or implement something from scratch. Uh, RFID is cost effective, it's easy to set up, and it gives you visibility that barcode just can't get you. And so it helps you manage the important equipment that your business is in, is in charge of. And so let's let's really dive into why RFID and identify some of the main principles of, of what RFID is. So we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the technology. Um, I am not a or I am not an engineer. I'm not going to get to that technical level of of the waves, the electromagnetic waves, and how it works as a technology. But functionally, uh, this is what you need to know. So RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification, and essentially it uses magnetic electromagnetic fields to identify unique tags. Uh, you probably use RFID in your daily life, or or whether you know it or not. And the two common examples I have are are toll tags. Uh, if you go through a toll, there's an RFID reader that scans your tag for your toll tag that's in your vehicle. And it knows that it's Christian Garcia's vehicle. I know to go to his account and deduct however much the toll is for that day. So that's that's RFID. Uh, Anti-theft systems in retail, uh, retail companies. So I know places that uh, like Lululemon or maybe Dick's Sporting Goods or maybe some higher end places uh, they have those fixed readers at the front of the store. And if it detects a tag, 
it triggers an alarm, right? That's also RFID. So it's it's detecting that presence. Um, what we're going to be focusing on today is mostly on the passive RFID side. So there is there is active RFID technology. You typically tend to see more passive RFID technology uh, in the industry today. And so the way that that works is a passive tag is unpowered. It does not have any onboard power, so it doesn't fire itself up to report. That's uh, You see that in Bluetooth beacon technology, which we won't be talking too much about in this webinar series, but uh, that's really the main difference between RFID and Bluetooth is that Bluetooth contains an onboard battery that powers itself up to beacon information. Uh, passive technology, specifically passive RFID technology, does not have that. So the way that passive RFID tags work is that a reader, and that could be a handheld scanner, that could be uh, one of our electricity eye controllers, uh, which is essentially an edge device, a fixed reader. It sends a signal that has just enough power for the tag to power up and report back its information. So it's broadcasting a unique value, right? So in this case, it'd be the RFID tag number. Uh, we often see that in 24 character format. So the way that you make that pairing between a specific tag and a specific item you just make the pairing of unique tag to unique, you know, asset identifier or inventory identifier. And you make that pairing. And now we know that when I see that tag, I'm seeing that item. Um, so like I mentioned, readers are built into handheld devices or they're part of a fixed controller. Uh, you may see these uh, like Zebra handheld scanners. There's really two configurations for these types of mobile computers or these scanners. You have a mobile computer which is running its own version of most likely it's going to be running a version of Android and it has an RFID scanner built into it that you can, that you can access the hardware or you have RFID scanners that connect to a smart device via Bluetooth. So uh, I could be using my personal smartphone or a tablet uh, and I can connect an RFID scanner through a Bluetooth pairing and then read RFID in that way. So those are the two handheld methods. And then we'll dive a little bit more into fixed readers and how those work uh, later in the webinar. Uh, one of the key things to know about RFID, they are impacted by liquid and metal. Um, I didn't say negatively impacted, although it's definitely negatively impacted by liquid, but not necessarily by metal. Um, electromagnetic waves struggle to transfer through liquid. Uh, that's just the way it is. I'm sure there's science behind that, but... Uh, I, we have engineers at electricity who could probably explain it better than me, so I'm not going to. Uh, just know that it doesn't travel through liquid well. It also cannot penetrate metal, but it amplifies the signal. So if you were trying to scan, let's just take a big shipping container, a big metal shipping container. If I was trying to scan it from the outside, I wouldn't be able to see what is inside because the, the wave does not penetrate metal. Now, if I open that container and I'm scanning inside of it, Think of that, that wave that's bouncing all over the place. You're going to get really good coverage of those tags inside because that signal is amplified. It's bouncing all over the place, and it's increasing your odds of finding every tag that's within the container. So metal can be your friend and your foe, depending on what you're trying to do. If you're inside of it, you're great. If you're outside of it, you're not going to be able to penetrate it. So that's a little bit about the RFID technology. Let's hop into the next slide. So... Barcodes and RFID tags. Uh, what's the difference? You know, I think we're all very familiar with barcodes. They're 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 used everywhere. Uh, we use them at the self checkout. You know, everything we own pretty much has a barcode on it. And so it's really an understood technology. So I don't want to spend too much time explaining barcodes because I think we all have that basic knowledge. But really, where RFID tags uh, start to outperform barcode, it's in a couple of key areas. So Barcodes come in generic 2D or 3D printable format. RFID tags utilize various form factors. So you'll see tags that get manufactured in a variety of ways. You can put them in hardened casing. You can put them on labels, ruggedized enclosures. So RFID lends itself well to um, different form factors and configurations that can adapt to the environment. So as opposed to a barcode that, you know, maybe I'm putting it on something that's out you know, in a, in a tough environmental area, maybe there's dust, wind, rain, whatever the case may be. As soon as that barcode wears off or maybe it tears, you can't access it anymore. Versus an RFID tag, you can get them in multiple form factors 
to, to account for the elements that it's in. You can also get tags. Uh, we talked about metal not being able to penetrate metal. You can get tags with foam back backing to separate it from the metal. Or, you know, if you're, if you're tracking a container of liquid, uh, you can get a tag with a foam backing that creates that separation between the liquid and the tag. So you're creating that separation, makes it easier to read. So there's an endless amount of form factors that you can build RFID tags into. Um, one of the other benefits that you get, and one of the other differences is that barcode requires direct line of sight. Uh, I mean, you think about going to a, a checkout for at the grocery store, you have to individually scan each item that you have to have direct line of sight between the tag and the scanner. And like I said, if that tag gets, if that tag gets destroyed or if it wears out or gets torn, uh, then you're, you're out of luck. You got to print a new one. RFID can be scanned at a distance and, and you can control that distance to some extent by controlling the antenna gain. So if you really crank up the gain on the antenna, you can read from longer distances away. Um, the, and then if you, you know, if you scale it down, you can, you can restrict it to shorter distance reads. Um, you may have a use case for both of those scenarios. If I'm doing something like a cycle count, which we have a, a whole webinar episode dedicated to cycle counting, you may want the gain to be cranked up because you're trying to scan as much as you can without having to move all over the place. And so that's what high gain can get you. If you're using something like a check-in checkout solution, you may want it tuned down because you only want to scan the things, the specific things that you're checking out. So that's, that's all configurable, uh, both on the controller and the handheld side. Uh, we've seen, I mean, I've seen scanning, sheesh, I've seen scanning up to 50 feet uh, and you can get it, you can get it even lower than that. And you may even be able to take it higher than 50 feet. That's just personally what I've seen. Um, and that's just all controlled by antenna gain. But really what you're doing is you're, when you're scanning for RFID, if you're doing it with a handheld, you know, you have a handheld scanner, you pull the trigger and it's picking up everything that's around you. If you have a controller that's set up, there are RFID antennas that connect directly into the controller and they're scanning for everything that's around. So that's really how you're getting past having to scan each tag one by one. You can do bulk scanning rapidly with RFID. And so that's really where barcode is different, right? You, you can only ever do a manual scan, right? Static RFID scanning can support automated tracking because you can set these controllers up to scan at a, at a user-defined frequency. You can have that done uh, once every five minutes, once every 10 minutes, uh, once every minute. And so as things are moving across, you know, let's say a warehouse floor, if a controller picks it up and you have controllers that represent different locations or different sections of a warehouse, that's an automated tracking solution because I know that my controller represents section one and anything that it scans should get moved to section one. Likewise, if I have a controller set up at section two, anything that scans will get moved to section two. And so there's a little bit of uh, jockeying between if, if two readers pick up a tag, you know, there's a way to differentiate between, you know, which of those controllers should it be placed at. A lot of that's done through signal strength, um, but that's how you really set up an automated solution. So how do you implement an RFID solution? Uh, really the main process, really for any tracking solution, starts with associating a unique tag value with a unique asset or inventory item. I already mentioned that. Uh, that's really step one. So if you have a solution in place, uh, you've likely already done this, right? You've, you've said this barcode represents this laptop or this printer or maybe this, you know, this piece of heavy equipment. Uh, you've probably already done that. And so when you're going from a barcode solution to an RFID solution, specifically within Aptricity, uh, each asset and inventory item has both a barcode and a tag number field. So you can retain all of that barcode information. I think our lights, there we go. We have automatic lights in here. So if I just got dark for a second, that's why. Um, our solution basically has both a barcode field and an RFID field. Uh, I said RFID field, really a tag number field, because like I mentioned, we also track via uh, Bluetooth and GPS. So you put that tag number in at the asset or inventory level, and that's how you make that pairing, right? The next part of this is when you're buying RFID tags, 
you can either purchase them encoded or you can buy a printer that encodes them uh, as you have them. So what encoded means is that you're basically programming the specific value that you want uh, in that tag. So uh, like I mentioned, what we typically do is 24 character RFID tags. You know, each one of those tags needs to be unique. So we have, you know, we have printers that print labels, but also encode the value into the tag itself. So you can either buy them encoded or you can encode them yourself. It's kind of your call. Um, it's, it's, you know, if you're going to be printing a lot of tags uh, and you, you're worried about maybe duplicating a tag value, uh, you may, you may bring a printer in house and just do it yourself. It's incredibly simple. Uh, you can also print custom labels using these types of printers. So, um, you know, that way you can slap it on. And a lot of those labels can contain a barcode as well. It's kind of a fallback in case, you know, for some reason the RFID doesn't work. Um, and that's really where I keep jumping ahead of myself when I go through my slides, because I already mentioned that you can, you can combine barcode tracking solutions with RFID. Uh, we already talked about that. So the next part of this is you want to determine the frequency of how often you want to scan. Uh, and this really dictates whether or not you want a passive tracking solution or an automated tracking solution. Um, automated systems utilized fixed readers that scan on a frequent basis. Uh, and in this scenario, we would point you towards an electricity iConnect controller. Um, the iConnect controller has RFID antennas that plug into the, you know, the main controller and then they connect to the internet. So they can connect to the internet via ethernet via Wi-Fi or an LTE SIM chip. Um, so if you remember the old days of, of data packages when you had your cell phone, you, know, you only got a certain amount of text or a certain amount of browsing data. It's basically that. Uh, those data plans are incredibly cheap. Uh, you know, we work with Verizon, uh, T-Mobile Sprint, AT&T to, to find the cheapest data plans. But basically you put a SIM chip in there and that's what connects it to the internet. And so regardless of how you connect it to the internet, the way that those controllers work is that you can program how frequently you want them to scan. You can also program what location they represent in the uh, asset and inventory management software that Electricity provides. And then basically you just set it up. You, you, you set it up, you do all the proper wiring, and this thing will scan as frequently or as infrequently as you'd like. And when it collects all that information, it sends it through the cloud to our, um, our SaaS software. And it updates all the information there. So we use these controllers in a variety of locations. We use them at warehouse locations. We use them at retail stores. We use them in transit, uh, in vehicles. We can use them in shipping containers. Really anywhere that has active power, you can use one of these controllers. And so that's how you would set up an automated solution. It You program it to scan every X amount of minutes. It's scanning, collecting data, sending it to the web. And then the web is giving you that data that you can view and making changes based off of location and quantity. Uh, when we talk about a manual system, it's more dictated by how often you go send somebody out to scan the stuff. So I have a I have a handheld scanner. Uh, my company tells me, "Hey, I need you to go do a cycle count today." Uh, your your obviously your information is only going to be as accurate as as how often you scan. And so we've worked with companies in a variety of different industries who utilize automated or automated scanning in certain areas and manual scanning in other areas. And a lot of times that's determined by the value of the product that you're tracking. If you're tracking things that are in the tens of thousands of dollars, you may want to know where they are at a more frequent basis. If you're tracking things that cost maybe 50 to a hundred dollars, you know, maybe I need to know where they're at once a day or once a week, maybe once a month. That's really where manual tracking, uh, can be more of a solution than an automated system. And, and I really cannot stress enough that the value of what you're tracking should dictate the type of tag and the type of tracking solution that you put into place. It does not make sense to get automated tracking for things that cost a buck. Uh, now, if you're losing a million of those things, yeah, maybe you should put something in because obviously that adds up to a big number. But what we're really looking to do is put a solution in place that makes the most sense uh, for your business. That's we being electricity. That's really what we look to do uh, when we schedule a call and chat with you about your needs. Um, and then once all that's set up, track your items and then you get information uh, through the web on 
how these things, you know, where have they been, you know, things like location history, dwell time. Uh, I know that this item has been here for, you know, a couple of days. Uh, you know, I know that this item has been traveling through, you know, this part of the warehouse to this part, maybe it made its way onto a shipping vehicle and then it ultimately made its way to a storefront. Uh, that's a pretty common use case across the supply chain for a retail company. You know, if you have scanning points at the warehouse, the vehicle, the storefront, you can track it throughout every step of that process um, through either a controller or a handheld. So if I'm loading a vehicle, uh, if I have a controller in the vehicle, it's going to scan those tags. It's going to associate those tags with that vehicle. If I'm doing it via handheld, I scan everything. I associate it with that vehicle and I'm on my way. So that's really the implementation side of RFID. So what are the benefits? You know, we talked about how to implement it. We talked about how it's different from RFID or excuse me, different from barcode. Where do we see the biggest benefits with an RFID solution? Um, well, just the ability to establish an automated system is a huge benefit. Um, instead of having to send people out to go do scans periodically, those can be done automatically. Uh, if you're getting information more frequently, you know it's more trustworthy as opposed to you know, things like cycle counting or, or you know, location tracking. It's only as accurate as you get scan information into your system. So having that at your fingertips to be able to have the, you know, real time, near real time to real time information is a big benefit because it's a huge shrinkage prevention uh, method. You know, if I know that, uh, if I know that items are moving towards the, you know, the exit of the building, I can flag that and say, hey, these things aren't supposed to be moving. I'm, you know, every five minutes I get this update that this thing's inching closer to the entry or the exit. I can flag that and make sure that it doesn't get stolen or, or make sure that it doesn't walk out of the, you know, the warehouse as things tend to do. So having that automated system, uh, it can reduce labor hours specifically around cycle counting uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, sending people out to go scan each individual item to get an idea of how much you have. Um, you can do this in an automated way by controllers that do a full scan. They package that information up, they send it to the web and they say, Hey, here's what you got. Right. I've used this example before. So if you've been on a webinar or if you listen to a podcast, you've heard this. I used to work at a, a sporting goods store called Academy here in Texas. And when we had to do product inventories, we had to shut the store down at 8 p.m. And we wouldn't leave till two in the morning. And it took the entire store of people going around, either writing down what we had or scanning what we had and and combining it all up saying, here's what we have. And there was a you know an ERP or a, a, uh, an inventory management solution in place that would say, wait a minute, you're supposed to have 100 of these. Why are you only showing 55? Well, you have a couple 16, 17 year old kids at two in the morning who are tired counting all your inventory. Probably not going to get the most accurate result in that regard. Um, so that's really where automated systems can, can help overcome some of those needs, reducing labor hours, providing more accurate scans for cycle counting. Like I mentioned, we have a whole webinar dedicated to cycle counting as a use case that we'll dive into a little bit more. So I won't spend too much more time on that. Um, we talked a little bit about rapid scanning, uh, the ability to read hundreds, maybe thousands of RFID tags with one pull of the trigger to be doing that in a couple of seconds, right? It would take me a long time to scan hundred barcodes. Uh, I don't know an exact number. I haven't done that in a while. I don't think I've ever scanned hundred barcodes in, in succession, but to scan hundred RFID tags takes a second. If they're all nearby, it's done like that. So when you start talking about things like cycle counting, the ability to complete that in a matter of minutes, as opposed to a matter of hours or days, uh, we've worked with companies who say we cycle count year round because by the time that we get done with one section, it's time to do the next one. There are full-time employees whose job it is to cycle count year round. Um, the ability to do that in an automated fashion gets rid of that person. Uh, maybe it doesn't get rid of that person, but allows them to do something else that's probably more fun for them. So that's really where rapid scanning can provide benefit. Um, you start to get an introduction into sensor technology. So sensor technology really is exactly what it sounds like. You have tags that have sensors, and these sensors track things like temperature, uh, light exposure, shock, vibration, uh, movement. So when you start to integrate or implement RFID, 
you can start to get some of those entry level sensors that don't only give you that specific number that's encoded into the into the tag, but also some sensors about the about the environment that it's in. Temperature is a big one. So if I scan a tag, uh, we go back to our example of how the tags work. The scanner sends a signal to the tag. It powers it up just long enough to capture the temperature of its area and send its information, uh, its tag information and the temperature information back to the scanner. I read that. Now I can start to see, you know, uh, specifically in things like cold chain, you know, am I, am I making sure that my items are stored in a proper temperature? If they're not, they're going to go bad. And I can act on that if they are in an improper temperature range. So that's really where temperature can be a huge benefit. Um, cost efficient. You can find tags for cents. Uh, you can buy rolls of tags. It's like, like with most things, if you buy it in bulk, you know, you get a cheaper cost per unit. Um, if you're buying rolls of 500 tags, uh, you know, we have, we have people who source this on our side that have more information than me, but you're looking at, you know, maybe 20 to 50 cents a tag. Uh, don't quote me on that because I haven't gotten our most recent numbers, but that's really the range that you're looking at. You're not going to be spending more than a dollar a tag. Now, if you start to get into the custom enclosures, uh, the sensor technology, yeah, you probably will be spending a little bit more because you're getting more, but really these tags are incredibly cheap. Uh, they can be encoded. Like I mentioned, if you're, if you have one of those, um, those printers that encode labels, they also can print barcodes custom information on them. So you can get these custom labels with an RFID chip built in. Uh, so it's incredibly cost efficient. It's not, not an incredibly expensive solution to put into place. Like I mentioned, you can combine it with barcode. So you don't have to replace your system. You can, you can supplement it. Um, and then we talked about the various form factors for how it can adapt to the environment that it's tracking in. So those are the benefits of RFID tracking, there are certainly much more, but those are really the key ones that we like to focus on when we're talking with uh, with businesses who are asking questions about RFID. So with that in mind, that reaches the end of our presentation today. Hope it was helpful. Hope that you guys um, learned a little bit about RFID. We will now transition to the Q&A session. Um, like I mentioned, if uh, for those who weren't here at the top of the, of the webinar, uh, we are doing the Q&A through chat. If you have questions, feel free to type them out. Um, I'll address as many as I can. It's about 11.07 right now. I know we scheduled a full hour uh, for the session. So if you have questions, fire away. I'm going to take a quick drink of water, and then we'll uh, dive into the Q&A. All right, question from Zach. Do you guys work with any oil and gas applications, specifically drilling and downhole equipment? So we work with oil and gas um, in the sense that we're tracking a lot of the equipment that gets sent out to drill sites. Um, so going equipment that goes from warehouse to the drill site, that's really where um, our oil and gas connections are right now. Um, we, we talk with oil and gas companies pretty frequently about uh, tracking needs and it tends to be, you know, pretty unique in terms of what people are looking to track. Um, and that's really our bread and butter is tracking. So uh, if they're, you know, whatever they're looking to track, uh, we're able to track, you know, either through RFID or things like uh, Bluetooth and uh, GPS. Uh, question from, is it Marloy? M, Marloy? I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's the, the, the M Arloy or if that's Marloy, but a uh, question from Marloy. Does RFID work well with metal or liquid? Um, with metal, it, it, metal is an amplifier of RFID. So if you're trying to penetrate metal, you can't do that. Uh, but if you're inside a metal container, it bounces the signal and amplifies it. So uh, it's both, it, you know, there's pros and cons to metal with liquid RFID does not penetrate liquid well. So if you are trying to track something liquid with RFID, um, you, you want to have some sort of backing that separates it from, uh, from what you're tracking. So uh, for example, um, if I'm tracking like uh, like a barrel of oil, you know, I, maybe I want to have that. I would want to have some sort of separation between the metal, uh, so that way it doesn't the the tag doesn't get lost and it doesn't just bounce off. So um, it's possible. You just have to get a little creative with how you tag it, and really it's just creating like maybe a centimeter to two centimeters of separation between what you're what you're tracking and the tag itself. 
Uh, next question. Are RFID tags reusable? They are. Um, we typically don't see a lot of people who will reuse RFID tags, uh, and but that mostly depends on what you're tracking. Uh, if you're tracking an asset, you know, for your business, there are you know, you want to make sure that you're keeping track of that long term. Uh, something that's important to your company, uh, you you want to track it long term. So you're going to associate a tag with a particular item for the purpose of tracking it for years, m- months, years, you know, for a long time. If you're putting it on inventory and you're selling that inventory, typically you're not going to rip that tag off before you sell it. You, you, I mean, cause it's not that big of a deal. It's so cheap that it, it doesn't really make sense to reuse them uh, because you'd have to go through that process of uh, basically unpairing that tag with that specific item and then repairing that tag with another item. Um, so that, that process doesn't really make a lot of sense. Technically, it's possible. I personally don't see a lot of people using it. So um, you can kind of take that for what it's worth. A uh, question from David. Does your solution currently link to any blockchain solutions? And what ERP systems have you connected with? Uh, I'll start with the ERP question. We we integrate with all the major ERP systems, um, SAP, Epicor, Lawson, um, one of the, one of our biggest, uh, customer accounts that uses RFID is Verizon and we feed their SAP solution with, uh, with RFID data every 15 minutes. And that file is huge. We do that. At, we do about a 30 gig file every 15 minutes. So, uh, we do build standard integrators into ERP systems. If it's something that we haven't done before, uh, which is highly unlikely at this point, because we've, we've built into all the major ones, um, we can. We, we can build something. We have a, we have a um, integration engine that is pretty standardized, allows us to send data both one way and two way to any ERP solution you may have in place. Uh, and then the other part of that question, does your solution currently link to any blockchain solutions? We currently do not have any linkages there, but it's something that we are exploring. I know that the, the blockchain is obviously an emerging industry. And so we're, we're actively looking at what that partnership would look like. Uh, but we do not currently have any partnerships there. Uh, another question, how do I determine when to tag assets and in inventory at the warehouse, on trucks, storerooms, stock rooms, or the sales floor? Uh, that's a good question. So you can really tag it. You really want to tag it at as soon as possible. If you're going to be tracking it, you really want to tag it at the point of origin. So if you're if you're a company that's big enough to be able to go to a manufacturer and say, hey, include this as part of your manufacturing process, that's what Verizon does with their manufacturers. With all the equipment that they receive, they have them tagged at the manufacturing level before they ever receive it. Um, you can also tag it as soon as you receive it. Uh, but really, you want to tag it as soon as possible so that you can start tracking as soon as possible. But you can do this at any step in the process. Um, as, 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 as soon as you want tracking information, that's when you can tag it. Uh, another question here, are tag sizes customizable? Absolutely. So we've got tags that are built into what would be like a typical barcode label. Actually, uh, we have a uh, we have some examples of tags um, and like a little, it almost looks like a little scrapbook that we carry around, but uh, there are so many different ways that you can build tags. So if you want something really small, you can build them into you know a couple inches of size. If you want things that are a little bit bigger, uh, you can do that as well. And that's really where the customizability of the form factor uh, really benefits RFID as a technology. Question from Zach, what is the average pricing for the automated solution fitting out a warehouse of scanners to track inventory going in and out? Um, so it's it's tough to give an exact number on that, but I can tell you how the pricing would be structured. So basically the the pricing would be structured on, if, if you want to purchase your own tags, you're, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, we, we can purchase tags. We can also encode tags here at Aptricity. And then really what you're looking at is um, licensing for the software. So however many users you want uh, using the software. And then there's, depending on how you implement the controllers, there's, you know, if you're using it in a warehouse, the size of the warehouse and the level of tracking really dictates the how many controllers you need. And then also how you're connecting them to the internet. So typically in a warehouse, you're going to have, you know, either Ethernet or Wi-Fi available. So you don't need the LTE SIM chip. So you get rid of that monthly data plan uh, in that scenario. But the the controllers themselves, 
have a device connection fee. And so basically it really depends. It depends on how many controllers you want to set up in your warehouse, how many antennas you want each of those controllers to have. Uh, and then there's really three levels of tracking that we provide. We provide uh, presence, which basically just means I know it's here. And the example I'd use for presence would be it's in the building. Uh, proximity, I know it's on this side of the building. And then position, I know it's at this spot in the building. So three different levels of, of, of tracking uh, accuracy. And then there's different costs associated with that. But really the, the main... The main uh, factor in, in pricing is how many controllers and how many software users you want. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely reach out to us. Uh, we can get into a little bit more detail because it, it is highly dependent upon um, the size of your warehouse and, and how many controllers that you want. Uh, we've worked in million square foot warehouses. Uh, we've worked in square, or did I say square houses? Million square foot warehouses. And we've worked in much smaller warehouses than that. So, uh, and it's all customizable depending on the level of tracking that you're looking for. Uh, another question from David. Uh, will you cover in future sessions how tags are coded, used at the EDP level down to the individual serialization level? How do you link said products to RFID tag sense? Yes, we will talk about that more. Um, we, I can get more specific into how we do it at the electricity level. Uh, there's a handful of ways that you do that pairing. Um, on the inventory side, you can do that at the SKU level, or you can do that at the, um, if, if you're tracking a specific product, um, uh, and you want to know, you can track that at the serial number level, uh, on the asset side, it's, you know, assets are typically, you know, more expensive items that you're tracking at the each by each level. Um, so you're just associating that tag number with, with the actual, um, the actual item itself. So yes, we can go deeper into that. I know that I touched that at kind of a high level, uh, but I will, I will make sure that in the, uh, in the future episodes, we talk about that process a little more in depth. All right. Well, we'll, we'll go ahead and um, transition into the closing. Um, if you have any other questions, maybe things that you might've forgotten, uh, reach out to me directly. I'd be happy to, to connect with you. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we're happy that you chose to spend some time with us today. Uh, our next webinar will be uh, next week, next Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Central. Uh, like I mentioned at the, at the top, uh, every webinar that we do will be on a Thursday at 10.30 Central. Um, and like I mentioned, we'll be hosting all these on Zoom. We're going to make these available on YouTube. And uh, you, can, you can also request a personal copy. If you, like I said, if you have any questions, reach out to me personally, cgarcia at electricity.com. Uh, if you want to learn more, maybe book a demo, see this thing in action, uh, you can visit our website. There's a book a demo button. Uh, I'll either reach out to you or we'll have one of our salespeople reach out to you. Um, but we hope that this was helpful. We're really excited for the rest of these three, um, these three webinars where we're going to be talking about specific use cases where RFID really shines. Um, I'm excited to do these because uh, I've done a lot of these projects and I'm, I'm actually working on one later today that's actually going through all three of these. So it's something that people are interested in. It's something that we know works and that can really save people a lot of time and money by implementing the right solution. So with that in mind, thank you guys again for joining. Uh, we hope to see you next Thursday at the same time, same place, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody.